speak to you today a word that has been marinating in my heart. Hallelujah. Uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, because, you know, not because, but God, God is doing some awesome stuff. Yes, yes. And I think that many times we fail to see the awesomeness of God. And not only we fail to see it, but we fail to understand the application of what God does, how it applies to us in our lives. That nothing happens in vacuum. Yes. That everything is working together for the good for those who love God and for those who are called to yes. first. Amen? It, it's not for you to uh, many times question a lot of these things. And yes. you've got to be careful that you don't become cynical. Amen? Yes. In this world, in this life, about the events that's going on. Yes. Solomon said it this way. What, what is, has been, amen, yes. Amen. And what 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 what's to come has already been. Yeah. In other words, what Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. So the turmoil and so forth that we're seeing today in the in the world has always been there in one form or another. Right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We we all we this is not the first time in history where we've come to a, a place where as a people uh, we have lost our direction. Amen. Uh, to God. The Bible says in the book of Judges, after God had did so much miraculous work through the lives of the nation of uh, Israel, amen. The, the, uh, 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 in the book of Judges, the Bible said there rose up people that did not know God. And I'm, I, I, I tend to think that in, in this generation, amen, we've got people that don't know God. Uh, but it doesn't stop us from knowing him, amen, to keep on putting out, amen, his word and what God is saying. Praise God. I want to talk this morning about when there is order, manifestation will follow. When there is order, manifestation will follow. And many times, y'all, you know, we all get the manifestation thing because things is not in order. So I'm going to talk about order on this morning. And the criticality of order in all of our lives, amen, it, it's something that, it, it's something that, you know, what you don't know can hurt you, yes, yes. amen, and what you do know can help you, yes. but you've got to learn how, amen, you've got to learn how to uh, take what you know and apply it. Because if you never apply what you know, then you will never grow from where you are. Amen. Praise God. And many times, y'all, we, we get caught up into this. This uh, uh, we get caught in a world cycle, and there are other people get caught in a, surf, in, in, in a church cycle. Amen. And then there's another group, y'all. They get caught up in cyber. It's neither the world nor the church. It's their own cycle. Amen. That they've got to deal with. And so I'm going to talk this morning, amen, about when there is order, manifestation will follow. Amen. Amen. You, you don't have to look for it. You ain't got to pray about it. Amen. You just got to get in line. See, there's much prayer that's being made, y'all, that doesn't have to be made. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. See, see. Paul said it this way, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I acted like a child, I spoke like a child, and everything I did was child's. He says, but something happened to me. I grew up. He says, I became a man. And when I became a man, I put away childless things. Amen. In other words, I changed the order of which I was doing stuff. Amen. And once Paul, and you can follow this line, but once he changed the order, then manifestation followed. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Amen. So I'm going to have you this morning. I'm, I want you to be blessed today. Oh, praise God. Go with me. I got several scriptures I'm going to go to today from this, uh, from this word today. First, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20. And as we deal with order, amen. I, I, I want you to understand that God is a God of order. Yes. The Bible says in the beginning, amen, God created the heavens and earth. The earth was not form and void. God was on the, put, put in the face of me. They stated a situation, amen, and then it said, and God, and the Spirit of God moved. Yes. Praise God, amen. And once the Spirit of God moved, then God spake. Yes. Hey. 
Hallelujah. Amen. To bring things into order, oh, yes. this is very prophetic to you. Yes, to yes. bring things in order, you got to speak to yes. it. Yes. Amen. You got to speak to it. And when you release the word, y'all, the word takes form into that thing. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. So you, you got to release a word to it. Hallelujah. You got to release. I, I said to, I don't know whether it's Tuesday, I might be Tuesday, but I said, y'all, in this season that we're in, Amen. This is the season, y'all, of declaration and proclamation. Yes. Yes. We've got yes. to declare some stuff as well as proclaim some yes. things. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can only declare and proclaim if you're in a certain uh, standing. Oh, come on. Amen. You've got to be in a position to declare and proclaim. Yes. Amen. Yes. But it can be a fact. Look at the Bible. The Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, uh, begin at verse 20. I just want to read three, three verses there. Verse 20 in the King James. It says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of him that slept. For since by man came death, by man also, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all what? Die. Die. Even so in Christ shall all be made what? Alive. Every man in his own what? Order. Order. Yeah. Christ the first fruit, afterward they that are Christ and his coming. Yes. So there are orders. Yes, Lord. Uh, amen. There are orders of which things is, is, is happening, supposed to uh, transpire. And, uh, and, yeah, and when we deal with order, y'all, amen, we can't deal with order without dealing with first fruits. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. Because first fruit sets the tone of an order. Yes, yes. Oh, praise God. Amen. Uh, and, and so you, you understand this is God's, what God is saying. And I want to show you when you understand the blessings that will be manifested of what follow, and then your understanding aligning up of God's order. So God has said that Christ is risen from the dead and he came the first groups of them that slept. So you ask me the question then, was Christ the only one that ever rose from the dead? No. But he's the only one that ever rose from the dead that never died again. Never died. Amen. He's the only one that ever rose from the dead into a new creation. Praise God. That was different than what he died in. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so the Bible says that he was a first one. So what, what does it mean? So he's the first of his kind. Yes, when you speak about first group, you speak of beginning. Hallelujah. You speak of open up something to start something. Amen. Praise God. It's the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Christ is the first who arises from the dead. Amen. Never to die again. That's why as believer, amen, if you be in Christ, amen, you don't have to worry, amen, because you're going to follow him. Yes, indeed. Come on, y'all. See, the thing about a, a, a first group when you get in line, oh, I got to give you another group a while. Go, go to Romans 11 and 6 so I can show it to you. Romans 11 and 6. Romans chapter 11, verse number 6. As Paul was dealing with uh, the Israelites and the, and, and the Gentiles per se who came afterward, uh, here's what he's saying. The 11th chapter of, he, of, of Romans, if you want to understand our relationship as believers to the Israelite, Romans 11 gives you a good analysis of what has happened. But it says here in this verse, I'm just picking out one verse. It says, if by grace then, it is a, a no more a work otherwise that, uh, uh, no, wrong Wrong for 11, I'm sorry, 16, Father down. 11 and 16. This is the Israelite. He said, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branch. And, and what he's dealing with, y'all, I'm talking about order. Amen. What he's dealing with, that God shows a, a, a man called Abraham, and God made a nation called Israel. Yes. Amen. To amen, be the first fruits in the earth. Yes. But from that, amen, we got grafted in, amen, because the Bible says that we were without God and hope in the world. Right. But but God allowed us because of their 
unbelief. We're allowed to be grafted in. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so what the Bible says, so we was grafted into this tree called Israel. And so the Bible says, if the first root be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Amen. And so that we were grafted into that, y'all, that makes us holy. Yes, amen. Amen. But, but understand, amen, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to you is there's an order. There's always an order. And, and you can't bypass the order to get the blessing. The order is Israel first, then the church, then Christ, and then us in Christ in Israel. That's the order. And then, and then Christ shows us, y'all, if we follow him, we can be like him. There is an order. And there, there, I, I need to go back because there's a divine order established by God. And then, then God, and then God, and what did he tell Israel? Uh, Moses said, said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. is one. And thou shalt therefore have no other God before him. In other words, God got to be first in order. And then God got to be first in all. One of the problems that we're dealing with, some people say, well, I love God and do this, but they, but they don't do it in the order. Amen. And, and when you don't do things in order, how many of y'all understand things don't work? Right. You, there, there's an order that has to be, be followed. Amen. Amen. There's an order. Praise God. And so the Bible said, if the first fruit is hope, then what follows after that is also hope. Now the principle I need you to understand is when you make God first, everything comes after that. Come on, y'all. It's, it's, it's blessed. It's blessed by, by position because you let God go first. When you don't allow God to go first, amen, you're out of order. You're out of order. Now you say, well, where did this start from? Well, let's get some understanding of this, of this first truth. This, and then the word first truth, first, first born, this all, amen, come from the same root word. All means the same thing. Amen. Uh, when God established the children of Israel as a nation, go with us to Exodus chapter 12. Amen. What God did, amen, back there, he established order with them. Oh, praise God. Amen. That they should do things according to the, the way he said. Praise God. Exodus chapter 12. Let me um, just deal with you a little bit. Amen. In, in this teaching on this morning. And as he brought them out of, out of, out of bondage and out of slavery, amen, he laid down some regulations, some rules as to how they would worship him. Y'all need to understand something. You know, as much as we're in this world where everybody believes it don't make a difference how you worship God. I'm telling you, that's the spirit of deception. It does make a difference. Amen. And so everybody now has come up with their own little ways of their worship God. Amen. Praise God. But God has laid out order. Oh, praise God. And he has told us, y'all, in one scripture, he said, don't forget to assemble together. Amen. It, it, as the manner of some is. Why? Because in assembling, you're able to provoke one another to do good work. It's not just to come, uh, uh, say, come by here. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. No, it's about provoking. Yes. Amen. You, you need to make active. Amen. The God that's inside of you needs to be active outside of you. Yes. You need to understand that God is concerned. Amen. And people, what we've done, we compartmentalize. Amen. Our relationship to God is over here. Our relationship to other people over here. When God is saying, Amen, all of it is one. We, we try to mix up our, our stuff and say, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. No, no, you got one life. I mean, you got one life. I don't care whether you're in the church or in the ballroom. You got one life. Amen. Ought to be lived by one set of rules. Guided by one set of principles. Regardless of where you are. Amen. Praise God. So God said to them, amen, as he brought them out, 
and we're getting ready to run. Exodus 12 and 12. He, God said, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I'm going to smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. He says, I'm the Lord. Now I want you to notice what God did. He could hit anybody. But God is very specific what he did. He said, I'm going to hit the firstborn. Amen. And there's a reason why God hits the firstborn. Amen. And we'll see that in the scriptures in a minute. Amen. Uh, why, why the firstborn? See, when you don't recognize the order of God, amen, then you would not, you would not see the manifestation, amen, of his power in your life. You got to recognize that. Praise God. Let's skip down to verse number 29, the same chapter. Amen. And the Bible says that it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the captive. What did, what did God say I'm going to do? I'm going to smile the firstborn. I want you to notice it did not make a difference of their status. He doesn't understand that because some people think because of my status I'm exempt. No, 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 no. When God sent something, it's all inclusive. Praise God. It's all inclusive. Amen. And so the, God did what he said. He smote all of the firstborn. All of them. All of them. From the house of Pharaoh to the in the dungeon. If there was a prisoner in the dungeon and he was the firstborn, he died. Amen. God executed judgment. Amen. And he said against the gods of Egypt. Why? Because y'all, the firstborn, the first group is sacred unto God. Amen. God, that, that belongs to him. Amen. God has a, 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 a way of dealing with things that this, this first. Oh, praise God. Amen. It belongs to him. The first group, the first book. Belong to him. Well, let me show it to you. Go to the next chapter, chapter 13. Amen. Chapter 13. First and second verse. The Lord said, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Who said, Whatsoever opened the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of these, it is mine. It's mine. It's mine. What did God say? It's mine. What did he say? It's what? It's his. It's his. It belongs to him. Amen. It is his. It's, it's, it's his. So what God is saying, y'all, amen, of all the stuff of the firstborn, it belongs to him. Amen. And because it belongs to him, because it is his, y'all, amen, uh, then you got to be careful of what you do with what belongs to God. All right. He said, it is mine. It's mine. It's not yours. What did he say? It's mine. It is mine. Amen. It's mine. God said, it's his. Now move down to verse number 12. In that same chapter, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that open the matrix, and every person that come of a beast which thou had, the male shall be what? The Lord. And every person of an ass thou shalt redeem with the lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt do what? Break his neck. Break his neck. And all the firstborn man among thy children shall thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son axes thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him, My, By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt from the house of bondage. By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt from the house of bondage. Amen. 
What, what's that? And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn man, the firstborn beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that open the matrix, being male, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thy hand, and for frankness between thy eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. Why did they do this? Why did they give? Because God hath declared the first is mine. Yes. Amen. The firstborn male. Amen. The firstborn. Amen. It belongs to him. Yes. Amen. And how many of y'all know God don't say things just to say? God always has purpose in what he's saying. And so he told them they belong, and he said the firstborn to the Jews, they need to sacrifice, sanctify the firstborn. That belonged to him. I don't know, remember there's a story in the Bible where this man had asked God for something, and he, I, and he told God, he said, God, whatever comes out the door first, oh, okay. I'm going yeah. yeah. to sacrifice yeah. you. The first thing that came out was, was, it, was his door. And that's why you don't need to make rash proclamations and decisions. You need to understand, amen, and do things with knowledge, y'all. Amen. Although God has given us stuff, you, you need to operate with knowledge. Don't operate in ignorance. Oh, praise God. Amen. Because there is order to all of it. When you understand the order, amen, then you will understand the blessings of the lack of them happening in your own mind. Praise God. There is order. Praise God. There, there is order. There is order. Praise God. There is order. Praise God. Look, look at what, what uh, Mark 4 and 28 said. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 28. The Bible says, again with order, that the earth bring forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the air, afterward the full of air corn. Amen. You never see once you plant something, a full of air corn. Okay. There's order. The thing has to grow up. Mm -hmm. Amen. And between the blade and the, the, the air corn will grow. But there's order. Amen. Any times you see things not in order, y'all get disturbed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Y'all get disturbed. Yeah. When things are out of order. Amen. And it comes to this church. Annie's looking for stuff being in order. Amen. She looked, she said, no, I ain't, I ain't, that I'm alone. She should pay my no, that's out of order. Amen. She said, no, that's out of order. That shouldn't be there. That, she looked for order. Oh, praise God. And there's, there's order. When y'all drive your car, y'all look for order. Amen. You, you don't like nobody coming and cutting in front of you. What? They're out of order. You don't want to see nobody facing you in your lane. Amen. They're out of order. Right. Amen. Everything in life functions according to order. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God. Amen. In our generation today, amen, the children is raising up and trying to rule the pair. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, y'all know, it's out, that's out of order. Out of order. Oh, amen. amen. The parent is still the parent. Amen. Oh, the God. child is still the child. It makes no difference how old or how big they get. I talked to my grandson I mean, a, a few weeks ago. He started to say something, and I, 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 I jumped. I don't care how tall you are, how big you are, I'm still your granddad. Right, right. Amen. And you're going to respect me one way or another. Maybe your father won't do you, but, and maybe I'll lose. But, brother, you will not stand up in my face and disrespect me. Are you in order? 
I, I want to thank you. I'm not like that guy over there. I mean, I, I fast twice a week. I can give tithes. I, I, you know, I give offering. I, I ain't like that fellow over there. Amen. If you give with that kind of attitude, how many of y'all know God don't respect you? This fellow over here, the Bible said he would not so much as lift up his head, but he smote his breath. And he asked God, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. What's the difference? Order. This guy here, order was, he placed himself first. This guy over here praised God first. You need to know who's in charge of you. Who's the head of your life? Oh, praise God. And when you honor God in his position, God will have respect to you. And he will bless you. Oh, praise God. He will bless you. Amen. And that minute today is getting upset. Oh, no, we, ain't, we, we won't give nothing to the ministry. We won't give nothing to the church. Why? Uh, and you be no good. Could it be your order? How are you doing it? Are you doing it because, yeah, well, we got to do it. Please, folks, nobody should feel like they have to do anything. Yeah. If you're doing it out of, if you're doing it out of that kind of a heart and a spirit, it does not do you no good. Doesn't do you no good. Praise God. Let, 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 let's look at Isaiah 55. When we speak of this, because we need to understand some things about how God works and how God deals with some stuff, y'all. Amen. God deals with things of... Uh, in, in a way that, um, that, that they're always in order. We talked up, up this morning uh, uh, about the, the weather and so forth. How many of y'all know God does stuff in order? Yes. God does stuff in order. Last Sunday we didn't have no service, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Because of what the weatherman said about the weather. And I believe the weatherman. Yeah, y'all <laughs> I, I, I believe the weatherman, what he said. And then, yeah. y'all, you should be out, right, right, right. the weather's coming this time, this is going to happen, so forth. Amen. And everybody's saying, stay home, don't move, don't, don't move. Amen. Just stay in because the weather's going to be such, you should be out. So, amen. So, we, we all believe the weatherman. Praise God. Amen. We believe the weatherman. But the Bible says, it, uh, uh, well, mm. this 55th chapter is an awesome chapter, and I'm trying to get down um, to the, Let me start at verse 6 and come down to where I want to be. Verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may divine. Call upon him while he is near. Yeah, we, we said this morning about the presence of God. Y'all need to understand something about the presence of God. God is always near to you. Amen. At all times. There's no time when God is not close to you. Can I tell y'all again? There is no time when God is not close to you. You said, but I just made a big boo-boo. You didn't hear what I said. There is no time when God is not close to you. The deception comes that we think because we've messed up, we think that God will leave us. But the Bible never tells us that. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us just the opposite. Jesus said, I will be with you always. It was not, amen, it was not saying I will be with you always. I will, I will be with you uh, only when you're good. I will not be with you when you're messing. He said, I will be with you always. Always. So when you're going through, where, where, where is he at? He's with you. When you're coming out, where is he at? He's with you. What changes y'all 
It's us. It's our belief system, our emotion, that whether or not I sense that he's there or whether I sense he's not there. It's, it's me. It's not him. Praise God. And so he said, seek the Lord. Call upon him. You know, why the, but he's always near you. Yes. Next verse, verse number seven. So then what you do? Verse seven says, let the wicked forsake what? His way. All right. And the unrighteous man what? His thought. His thought. And let him what? Return unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And what God will do? Then he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, he will what? So what God is saying, if you mess up, fess up, yeah. amen, and, and I'll bring you back up. Yes. I'll praise you. That's what he's saying. Amen. But many times, y'all, amen, we hold ourselves down. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. We hold ourselves down. And, and, and it reminds me of the man at the pool of Bethsaida. When Jesus asked him, you won't be made whole. He made that you. He said, I have nobody to put me in. <laughs> Jesus said, I didn't ask you whether you want to be put in the pool. I asked you, did you want to be made whole? Yes. Right. 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 The Bible says, God would thought, verse number six. He said, for my what? My thoughts. Hey, verse eight, I'm sorry. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Amen. So God is doing some stuff today. Yes, I don't understand. He said, but you're a preacher. He don't need that. I don't understand. Amen. I don't have the inside. I know he's moving. Yes. Why he's moving the way he's moving? I don't know. But I know one thing. It's all going to work out. And I know another thing. He's still on the throne. I don't care how many shutdowns might come. He's still on the throne. Go ahead. Amen. Shutdowns don't knock God off the throne. Mm -hmm. Verse number nine. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, you, know, you got to be careful when you, unless God gives you the word, you got to be careful, amen, to speak for God. Yes, Lord. You got to be careful. He said, our, our ways and our thoughts is, as the heavens is above the earth. That's a long way. And then verse 10, get to order. He said, for as the rain coming down, and the snow from heaven, amen, and returneth not thither, but water the earth, and make it bring forth, amen, and bud, that it may give what? Seed. Seed what? To the, to the sower, and what? Bread. Bread to the eater. If there's, listen y'all, if, there, if there's no seed, there can be no bread. If there's no seed, there can be no work. It's an order. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. How many folks is trying to eat without sowing? How many people are trying to eat without sowing? That, 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 that's why I've got a different view amen, about people. Are they really homeless? The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. We can all do something. The Bible said God gives rain. When the rain comes, it comes down. God gives snow. Why does it comes down? Why? To water the earth. And what did God say? The order is it needs to come down and provide what the earth needs so that the, and so that the plants can grow and, then, and provide seed. And then God said, it comes back to me. See, y'all understand that God is the first one, y'all, in the recycling program. Wow. God don't waste. The stuff that we use, he brings it back up. Filters it. 
and set it back down to it. Amen. Amen. We've been drinking the same water for years. Because God just brings it up. Amen. Filled it, sends it back down to it. Amen. And we drank, oh, that's a good part. I ain't going to tell you where it was. California, I forgot the time, in California, amen, where in the, they're recycling sewage. Amen, the water and everything. Amen, and they give it back because they got water prices. And they got this process, amen, where they, they, they redo it and they get the water and they reclaim the water and so forth. I said, God, been doing this for years. I know in your mind y'all thinking, not me. But I tell you what, if you were thirsty, and I gave you a drink, I guarantee you were drinking. And then I tell you, after what you just drank, went through that. Praise God. Now listen, the order, verse number 11, critical verb. God said, so shall my word be that goeth forth where? Out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me more, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where it I sin. So God said, in the release of my word, my word is just like just like the rain. It's gonna go out. It's got a purpose. Amen. It would not return to me until it achieves what I sin it. Oh yes. It ain't gonna come back to me, amen, without doing what I sin. He said, that's my word. He said, for you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the tree shall clap their hands. Yes. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the bride shall come up the myrtle tree, and shall be the, to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen? That's the honor. Praise God. That's the honor. See, and, and so what God is saying to the audience here, and I, I need to speak God's word. Yes, indeed. Why? Because his word, the audience, if his word goes out, and his word will do what it said before it comes back. Yes. Understand, God's word is like a bumerang. Uh, it just doesn't go out there and stay out there. But once it does what it does, then it comes back in him. Amen. Praise God. When you release your word, understand, releasing a word, y'all. Oh, praise God. Amen. When you release a word that God has given you, it's his word. Yes, it is. And it will go out and do what he said that it would do. Praise God. And this same scripture, y'all, is found in the book of 2 Corinthians. Amen. About the, the, the he ministered seed to the soul. Second Corinthians uh, chapter number uh, nine and verse ten. It tells us this same story. Amen. Just in case you y'all think that I am just uh, Old Testament, read. But I want you to understand that this is under grace also. And, and while I'm here, just let me put a point on that because see, people would not use stuff from the Old Testament because he says on the law. Amen. But what they failed to understand that Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law. Amen. I come to fulfill the law. Romans, they can tell you that the law is holy. Yes. We don't use it to live by because we've got grace. But in grace, y'all, there is law. And order does not get missing because of grace. Amen. Amen. You got grace, y'all. There's still order in grace. Yes. And people think that grace means that I'm free but no order. And that's wrong. You got grace, but there's still order in grace. Praise God. Amen. Now, in the in the ninth chapter, second Corinthians. Amen. The Bible brings out this, this, this principle again. Amen. About this order. Look at verse number six. Paul said, This I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And we, he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. What is he saying? Amen. It's a difference between you sowing one seed and yes. ten seed. Come on. 
Don't get upset when the president sows 10 seed. And he almost sold one seed. Don't be upset. He's going to get a bigger harvest than you. Amen. And y'all, listen. Don't let the person that sows 10 seeds condemn the person that sows one seed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you sow according to your faith. Amen. You Listen, y'all. Sowing and reaping is, is connected in the faith. If you don't believe it, don't sow it. But if you believe it, you saw it. And then you will see the result. Yes. Amen. It's the order of your faith. Where do you stand? Amen. Where do you stand? See, I believe God that I'm fearful and wonderful and yes. Down to what my inward part. That I speak to it every day and tell them to get in line according to the way that God designed you. Yes. My God. Hallelujah. And I said the God that he made me, he can also maintain me. Yes. Yes. It's a sad manufacturer that cannot fix a car that they made. Uh, Y'all missed it. It's a bad inventor. They invent something but can't fix it. Amen. God made me. God can fix me. Whether it's on the inside or the outside. Come on, y'all. God can fix my mind. God can fix my body. Come on. Come. He made me. Listen. Listen, y'all. When something is wrong with you, you need to be like, I went to mechanic. And the mechanic, you know, y'all know in your car, you get this little light, uh, the engine, that little engine light that comes off. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, it's a little orange color like engine light. You take it to the mechanic. Mechanic got a tool. Yes. They, they plug into your car and they can read what that what the light be. Come on. They can diagnose what the now they're charging for. They're gonna charge you for, but they can diagnose what's wrong with your car. But it would give them a code for what's going on with that light. Amen. Amen. Listen, when y'all got a yellow light in your life, you need to let God plug into it. And tell you what's going on. Amen. If you wake up in this morning and you feel like, amen, hurt somebody, you need to plug into God. You got a problem. Amen. You got a problem. And you need to ask God, God help me today. Amen. You need to die over and straighten me out. I'm messed up. Amen. Don't, don't, don't leave home. Amen. And then go on the job and go crazy. Get right. Get right in the house. Amen. Praise God. Get right now. Get plugged into God. God can diagnose you. Praise God. What did he say? He said that. Yeah, you know, if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. How many of y'all know that's an order? Amen. He said, every man, according as he has purpose of, so let him give, not virtue, not for self, but God loveth the chair for you. Why? God, God wants you to do it according to your heart. And according to your love toward him. See, too many times, people have been, been felt forced to do things. But they did not do it out of love. And they did not do it because God led them to do it. Some people did things because they was intimidated by others. Uh -huh. Don't let nobody intimidate you to do what's right. You don't get no reward. It, it got to come from here, y'all. It's got to. And God is able. Look at verse 9. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always have an all sufficiency. In all things, may abound to every good work. If you follow the order, God said that you will, He's able to have all grace abound toward you, that you have an all sufficiency in all things will abound to every good work. And the Bible said, as it's written, He has the spirit of God and has given to the poor. His righteousness remain forever. 
Now he that ministers seed to the sower both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountiful, which causes through uh, which which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Amen. What did he say? He said, because of what you're doing, it, it's affect others. Hallelujah. Yes. Verse 13, he said, for a while, by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution to all and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, uh, which long after you, for they seem grace of God in you. Thanks be to God yes. for his unspeakable yes. gift. Yes. Amen. So, so as you follow God, y'all, as you do what, uh, put things in order, amen, then here you uncover a gift. Because yes. everybody can't do it. You uncover a gift. Uncover a gift. Uncover a gift. It's first. It's in order. God is crazy about himself. He said, listen, I'm a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. God would not give his honor to another. When y'all understand that, then you will open up an order in your life to flow the blessings of God. I don't teach y'all just to teach. Come on, y'all. Amen. I, I, I teach because I've got revelation on his word. Oh, praise God. Amen. And by giving God the first Amen. That, that's, that's a revelatory word. Amen. Amen. You open up, the, it's like open up the matrix of, a, a, of, a, of an animus, but it's like open up a wound of a, of a, of a woman, y'all. Yes, Amen. So the first comes out, God says, my, how, 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 how much do you think God is going to my first? Amen. I close.